So what we can do now is we can sort of talk about the role uh, of economic models. Okay, so we've talked about the assumptions of people, uh, and now what we need to do is think about uh, organizing those assumptions into sort of a framework, uh, which we call uh, the model. And so, again, the world is infinitely complex. Trying to take literally everything into account is not only impractical, but it would likely be distracting. For example, if you think back to when you were younger, I bet your parents had an atlas in the car somewhere that contained a map of all the major roads in the United States, or maybe just for your one state or states that you were frequently traveling to. Now, did that map have literally every single twist and turn in the road drawn on it? Of course not, right? Did it have every single road uh, that existed on it? No, right? If it did, it would have to be the size of the world, right? And it certainly wouldn't fit anywhere in your car. And so maps simplify the world so that, ironically, uh, we can better understand the world and get where we're going. Right? The map gives us a sufficient amount of data or information to allow us to get from, say, Michigan all the way to Florida. The same can be said uh, about economic models. Okay? And so let's go through uh, sort of our first model in this class, which, we're going, which we call uh, the circular flow model. And this is a simplified version of the model. So we're doing a simplification of a simplification of the world. But I think you'll be shocked to see uh, just how accurate uh, this, this, even this simple model uh, is. And so what we have is we're going to divide the world into sort of two groups. We can call them firms or businesses. put them in their own box, and we also have uh, households. And I'll put that in a box as well. Okay, And so all people are either working in a business or they're in their household, right? And that's it. That's all we're saying. So already we've simplified the world dramatically. And then we're going to say that there are two sort of markets. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to say that there is the market for uh, factors of production. I'll put in a box. And then there are the market or markets for. Uh, goods and services. Okay. And so that's it, right? We're going to say that there are two markets in this world, or two kinds of markets in this world. There's the market for factors of productions, and there's the market for goods and services. Okay. And what I should say or should point out uh, is that a market is sort of like a hypothetical place where buying and selling takes place. Okay, so here we have a hypothetical place where goods and services are bought and sold. And here we have a hypothetical place uh, where factors of production are bought and sold. Okay, and so I will use uh, the black pen to be uh, the flow of goods and services, or rather of, of dollar. Let's do this. We'll do inputs and outputs, and I'll use uh, the red to be uh, dollars. Okay, so we're going to simplify the world and assume that everyone uses dollars 
and that everyone is either a worker or a in their home. Okay, and so uh, what we've got is our two markets and two sectors of the economy. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, households will send money to the market for goods and services, right? And we just call this spending, okay? And in return, the market for it, they buy uh, goods and services. Okay. So this seems fairly simple, right? Households go to say the grocery store, right? And they spend money there and they come home with groceries or, or anything else, right? Maybe you go to the mall and you buy uh, an iPhone and you come home with an iPhone, right? So that's all this part right here is saying is that you go to the store, you spend money and you get things in return, okay? <clears throat> Similarly, we see uh, businesses will go to the market for goods and services, right? And they will sell things, right? So this is goods and services bought. And this would be goods and services sold, right? <clears throat> and they receive dollars in exchange, right? So they get uh, what we could call revenue, right? So again, right, businesses sell goods and services and they get money, right? So we could think of this as saying that businesses produce things that they want to sell to households and the household spends money. So their spending becomes, through the market for goods and services, a business's revenue, right? And so again, right, this <clears throat> should seem uh, fairly intuitive, right? Households spend money, they get products in return. Firms sell goods and services or products and they receive revenue in return, right? Now, uh, at the same time, right, we see uh, uh, households, right? Sometimes households uh, will sell things like <clears throat> their labor. So we'll go to work in the morning, right? So we'll sell labor or capital or land, right? We will rent uh, space to a business. Uh, or we'll give them some of our time, right? We'll go work for them, right? And in return, we expect to receive wages, right? So this could be uh, income in a more broad sense, right? So <clears throat> income is paid uh, from the the market for factors of production to households, right? So you go to work in the morning and you receive income. Right? Or maybe uh, you rent a lawnmower to a local lawn mowing company and you receive rent payments. Or you rent out a building and you receive rent payments. Right? Either way, right, you basically you go to work and you get money. Right? Nothing, uh, nothing too egregious here. You go to work in the morning and you get money at the end of the week. Right? And then the last part <clears throat> is here, the business buys your time or your labor or your machines or your land. <clears throat> we just call these things uh, factors of production. And they pay. Uh, Put some arrows on here. <clears throat> they will pay wages, uh, rent, or profit. All right. And so, if you look at this, 
<clears throat> we have a circular flow of money and goods, right? So money starts off in the households, let's say, people buy goods and services, right? That turns into revenue for the business, which they then spend on their employees to buy uh, production, and the employees receive income that goes back into the household. And at the same time, right, we see uh, how workers produce a good, right, by going through here, which is then sold and purchased by households. And so the crazy thing here, right, is that even though we've grossly oversimplified things, we've said uh, the whole world can be drawn basically using four boxes and two lines, right, uh, going in opposite directions, it's fairly accurate. Right? It seems to describe a lot of the world uh, in which we live. So if you think about uh, when you go down, uh, when you go to Starbucks, right? you are a household, you spend money, and you get coffee. Right? But the Starbucks takes that money as revenue, which they use or they receive because they provided you with the coffee. And then they take that money and they buy wages and or they buy labor from the barista, from the truck driver, from basically everyone involved in making a cup of coffee, <clears throat> and they receive the labor. And at the end of the day, the barista or whoever uh, works at Starbucks takes that money home as income uh, and in exchange gives up their labor. And so even though this is a very uh, simple model of the world, it seems to be fairly accurate, just like your atlas in the back of your car, right? Is it a perfect representation of the world? No, of course not, right? This is missing a few things. For one, there are other countries over here. Uh, there might be, you know, government at the center somewhere organizing all this activity. Uh, but the basic thing here uh, seems to be fairly accurate, right? It's not exactly a perfect representation, right? But but it shows us plenty of things, right? And so this is sort of our first model. Is it simple? Yes, it's a very simplified version of the world. But again, it shows us a few things and it helps us organize our thinking so that maybe we can understand where some breakdown is happening, right? And then maybe we can come in uh, and address it using either policy or uh, some other measure uh, of fixing it.